everyone, and welcome uh, to this special watch along and reaction for episode nine of Shogun. I am the outlaw, John Roca. Thanks so much for clicking play on this watch along and reaction. Some of you know I've done these occasionally on the channel, I'm not as consistent with them as as other people are, which I totally understand and respect and give them all kinds of props for. But for certain episodes, certain shows, I kind of like to do these watch alongs and reactions to see how people. Uh, react to what I'm reacting to as we're watching and the conversations that happen down in the comment section as well. And this is a show that I've been talking about since I saw the first two episodes in the theater, got crazy excited for, and that is Shogun. And of course, we've been doing these reviews on the channel for every episode with my co-host, my Cinephiles co-host, Steve Morris, and I've been breaking them down and having fun. So if you are just catching up to the show, maybe you're stumbling upon my channel, you're stumbling upon this Shogun reaction. You can go back and watch all our reviews, including reviewing for this one that I imagine is already up by the time you've already seen you, this reaction goes up. Uh, that there's spoiler reviews. We break them down, and what makes them unique is that Steve is an avid James Clavell fan and has read the Shogun book many, many times. And so we compare, we not only talk about what's in the episode, we also compare how it deviates from the book. And I think that's been a really fun element of our of our reviews and our conversations. But today, I'm here to watch episode nine, Crimson Sky. We know Crimson Sky, if you've been watching the series, is, of course, the plan that they had in place to march into Osaka and take it over, Tornaga marching in and taking it over and becoming the new ruler there in Japan. And when we last left episode eight, all kinds of stuff went down with uh, people committing seppuku, his top general there, Automoto, competing, committing seppuku with Toronaga looking like he's given up until, of course, the final moments with him and Mariko there where he basically tells Lady Mariko that uh, she is, is she ready for her plan and that uh, the sacrifice that uh, his top general did was on purpose so that uh, people would believe that he was really giving in there and so he's uh, he's sending um uh, marika with yabushige and with uh, blackthorn on blackthorn ship over to lord ishido and lady ochiba and seeing what they can uh negotiate essentially saying like you know he's going ahead of me to surrender for me is what tornaga is saying but clearly he has sent mariko on some separate mission so there's a lot to dive into here the the series is already deviated from the book in some incredible ways like the death of uh Toronaga's son and other things that have happened here that aren't quite the same. So it's going to be fascinating to see what this episode brings us. And I'm excited to see what we're going to see in this episode. Before I start watching this episode, though, I want to remind you all to please subscribe to the channel down below. Hit that subscribe button. Hit that bell button. See when we're dropping all the content we do just like this that pops up randomly here on the channel. Hit that bell button as well. And if you want to support all we got going on here on the channel, you enjoy the shows, enjoy the co-hosts, enjoy the content. Head on over to the Patreon, patreon.com slash John Roca, and pick a tier that works for you and that you will um, enjoy receiving benefits from. All right, now that we got all that channel business out of the way, it's time for me to watch and react to episode nine of Shogun Crimson Sky. Here, this one's directed, what we got? Directed by Frederick Iotoye, and it is written by Rachel Kondo and uh, Kayleen, Kayleen Puente. So uh, looking forward to this one uh, as we head over, as we head to the finale next week. This being the penultimate episode, here we go. This must be, well, we see Snow. This has to be a flashback, right? Because the last time we saw when she was younger, we saw the snow. And that was a big deal about her flashback. Kind of distinguished it from what we'd seen on Shogun and the lush lands that we've seen in the cities. Yeah, Shonai region 14 years ago. I thought so. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Wait, is she pregnant? Wow, I didn't see that. Have they said that? That she's been pregnant? Interesting. Oh, the father. Oh, interesting. He goes all the way back to this time. Oh, no wonder they have such a strong connection. What oh, was her first meeting? Interesting. Hmm. You are too young to be this sad. Oh. Dropping God on her. Saying that she might have a bigger purpose. Yeah. It's how they get you sometimes. Is that a rosary or is that a necklace? A cross. 
Interesting. How is this going to play itself out? Why are they showing this us this flashback with her connection to the priest, Father Martin? Wow. Well, she's clearly affected by it. Look at the way she's holding the cross and her hands are trembling. Her hand is trembling. That's how it is sometimes, you know. Some people, you can't explain it. Some people feel a connection to a uh, a religious artifact or a religious symbol, a religious thing, you know. And so her holding that cross with her hand shaking, did she find some solace in the teachings? Did she find some peace here in the religion that she did not have? When, as we just saw in the flashback, she's apparently tried to escape three times, so... I love this opening. I love... This is such a great... I mean, this is Rivals Game of Thrones as it builds. Obviously, the Game of Thrones theme a little more active. This one is much more languid and mysterious heading towards a uh, a final moment, but it builds up as you hear the drum beats coming in, which I love, so... And the beautiful architecture in this one. Yeah, there we go. Oh, Kayleen Puente. Sorry about that. I thought it was Caitlin Puente. My apologies if I read that wrong earlier. We're on uh, Yabushige and Blackthorn on Blackthorn ship. Was she with them? And Mariko, of course. Ah, your friend's oh, back from the car. Yabushige. Overpriced, so they traded for criminal. <laughs> what? This is the Portuguese, maybe. The black ship, it looks like. She doesn't trust Yabushige at all, does she? I mean, the little extra look she gives him as she walks away as he questions her about the translation. <laughs> I bet he hates that city. Every time he gets in that city, it's a battle of some kind. I love Yabushige. He's become just one of my favorite characters in the series. Because even though you should hate him, the actor playing him has such charm that you can't help but enjoy the performance and enjoy the work he's doing. What do we have here? Oh, they're being let in. Okay. Interesting. Everyone in the castle is now hostage oh. to Ishido-sama. If a member from every noble mm. family is trapped here. Interesting. She's giving the exposition to him, him sitting in for us, kind of. I deliver to you the Catholic gold. You won't regret it. I love the chemistry between these two guys. Yeah, we're shooting Blackthorn and and how it's developed. Summer. Oh. Every time he tries to get close to her, every time he tries to be alone with her, every time he tries to do anything, she's been putting up walls lately. These are Toranaga's, I think it's Toranaga's wife and then his new child. <laughs> Right. So they're aware of some kind of plan. Oh! Here we go, the captain of the black ship. <laughs> yeah, he's not as sneaky as he thinks he is to Tornaga, I mean. Like Jin found him out a couple episodes ago. And now this head Portuguese priest knows. Even if Father Martin might be different. Yeah. His most loyal vassal killed himself. It's confusing that he'd be suckered in unless he's willfully being suckered in or pretending like he doesn't know what's going on. Because Martin seems to be a little bit more on top of things than people give him credit for. So it's kind of odd that he'd buy this. Teaching him how to bow, huh? What does he have planned? Well, what do they both have planned? I guess Yabushige and Blackthorn for this situation, because clearly Yabushige has blocked has brought Blackthorn with him as some kind of bargaining chip, I would imagine. Or maybe they're in 
together in league. Oh. Yeah, this the, I think this is the Catholic, Catholic or the Christian Lord. Just been a bit since I've seen some of these. Oh, I am Kiyama Ukon Sadanaga. Oh, a little English. Yeah, Sadanaga. I am, however, a student of trade. <laughs> a student of trade. Nice. I love this. This is this is a simmering episode so far, right? This thing's just bubbling there. Just not quite, but not quite hot, but certainly you can feel the simmer beginning. All right, she. Oh, the air, Lady Ochiba. Okay, all right. This is an official gathering. God, it's beautiful. The set design, right? The luscious. Oh, right. Yes. The Taiko's wife died last time. So. Ah, so he's offered him as a gift. This is very similar to again Last Samurai, which I've said in the review a couple times, and some of a couple of the reviews for these episodes that there are shades of Last Samurai in this that they clearly borrowed from Shogun because it seems very similar to Algren and. Watanabe or Watanabe going to see the young heir. Obviously, it was a different time frame, both of those things. So, again, look at the show. I, I love the direction in this show, right? We go from really grasping the size of the situation to her passing between the rows, and boom, here we go, front and center, and Lady Ochiba immediately has a reaction. Yo. It's not an overt reaction. You can just see it in her eyes. <laughs> she does the right thing, but Ochiba can't look at her. Wow. He has other sons. Wow. Ishido. Talking about snow, talking about leafless branch. Is she the leafless branch? Was the snow the flashback? Oh, wow. She's pulling a power move. She's going to take off tomorrow with the two other ladies. Toronaga's uh, wife. She was trying to shut her down. Wow, she's putting this on the table. Oh, oh, oh. Mariko. Anna Sawai is so good in this role, man. Wow. wow. What is this leading to? Why is she pushing Ishida's buttons? <laughs> Calling out Ishido for his manners. Oh, my. Wow, she is putting it on the table there. This is a baller move. She's essentially saying, I have to follow my lord. That is my job. And they have to respect that in the culture. But Ishido's pushing back because I'm sure he suspects this is a Toronaga ploy. <laughs> oh my god. Once again, Yoshige doesn't know Toronaga's plans. He always wants to know his plans. You know, for a guy who plays both sides, Yabushige is constantly one or two steps behind. <laughs> but it's great. I love it. I love him on the show. Just... As well as every lord and lady being kept prisoner in this castle. Oh, yep. So she's basically turning around what Tor Toronaga had done with Lady Ochiba and the young heir. Except she was not as good as Toronaga at pulling this off, so you can tell how frustrated he is. Why is she always putting up a wall between them? Like, he just wants to care about her. Interesting. Oh, and they went to black. Why? Ah, I mean, one of my big complaints about the show has been that we haven't seen the love relationship between them really flourish. Oh, 
It's Mariko's son. I I, did they mention this before? I guess I must have forgot. That's on me. Wow. Wow, having him say that in Japanese, that's smart to drive the point home. I'm just consuming that she, she has a son, and now he's been like, you've been embarrassed. I don't want to carry the shame. Teenagers, I don't want to carry the shame of our family name. So I'm going to go and do something else and not be your son. Oh, sh oh. All right, I guess it's time to leave. Like, the show's been crazy with how it's deviated from the books. So where are we going with this? What's the end game with this? Because she's basically forcing Ishido's hand in order to win essentially a public relations war for Toronaga against Ishido with the higher families because of the fact that, you know, a lord can't be seen, especially head of the Council of the Regents, imprisoning people in essence. Man, why am I getting worried? What the fuck is going on here? Listen to the music. It's making me really nervous. And where's Blackthorn? He's just up there. He's, why isn't he down? Just maybe walk. I know she asked him not to get involved, but maybe I've seen too many American movies where the American would naturally get involved somehow and break all the rules. Shit, are we getting a samurai fight? Oh! Oh! He iced those too quick. That was awesome. Whew. Oh, there's the other lord. How come he's not behind the veil? Oh! Oh, yeah. Oh! Here we go! Oh! <laughs> oh! Oh! Oh, man. Oh! I mean, this is, you can tell, this is kind of genius because she's forcing the hand and the lords are all watching. The lords on the council are watching. So she is playing this perfectly, although what's the end game here? Wow. Yeah, she is totally taking advantage of tradition and ritual and respect here. But also, this is a smart political move. Fucking stop it, man. I know they're not. Oh, okay. All right. I know they're not going to kill her, but still, it's. Oh, shit. Is my girl going to go? Nice. Let's go. Finally. We've seen her training in in the show and in flashbacks. So. It's crazy. She can take on all these guys? No way. This ain't like a martial arts film and shit. Like, it's not possible. It's too many. Oh, wow. Yeah. See, all the lords watching this, they see her even fighting to leave, fighting for her freedom, so... Don't hurt her now. Come on now. Back the fuck up. Oh, man. I'm getting chills watching this. Now, again, I don't remember the original yeah. series, but this is based on Blackthorn and... because You know... I'm sorry, Blackthorn's character is based on... Oh, wow. Asking Kiyama to be her second, which means the guy who's going to cut off her head after she commits the seppuku. She's not going to commit seppuku, right? I mean, like, what the fuck, man? Because, I mean, as I said, this is based on, Blackthorn is based on a real life guy who ended up marrying uh someone like mariko and having kids so how far are they going to take how close are they going to come with this you know there's going to be some close call with the, the seppuku yeah it is her vengeance yeah oh, shit. Oh. oh what's the fan mean what's that opening of the fan mean damn seiki man keep your mouth shut once again, yeah, yeah, no, yeah, of course, the other hostages will want to leave if she gets to leave. Ah, yeah, See, here we go. 
Oh shit, Ochiba and Blackthorn, what is this all about? She has great dead eyes, like. I have no idea what she's gonna do. Great poker face. <laughs> oh, yeah, Mariko was right. Yep, it was a ruse, so she sends away all her guards so no one else can witness their interactions. So clearly, she does have affection for Mariko. Oh, wow. So she, she knows the situation. But each one of them has done what they needed to do to survive. Mm, wars raged even in our castle. That's a great line. Basically saying she knew her, what her dad was. Oh, yeah. Talking about her being a martyr. Yep. Here we go. Now we're getting the nitty gritty between these two. This is great. These are two women caught up in the games of men, the patriarchal society, right? And they have to speak in code to a degree. <laughs> Ochiva crossed that line. I, what is what is Blackthorn's point, man? Too many times in the series, he's just kind of a person on the sidelines. Polonaga has thousands of warriors at his disposal. Vassal. Yet. This is the difference here between them, right? One is a survivor. One is... They're both survivors, but in different ways, right? I to give your loyalty. Finally! It's worth more than this. Little reaction from Blackthorn. Oh, yeah. Then will you consider living? Wow. That's as close to saying I love you as he said to her on the show you know i i don't think they fleshed out the storyline as strongly as they should have in the show but clearly it's not the actor's fault they have very strong chemistry with each other yeah you know what the request is don't you wow look at that shot pulling away as if both of them are on their knees. What's going to happen here? Like, is she going to go through with this? Like, wait, I don't, again, I haven't read the book and I, the series is so long ago. I don't remember much if, of any of it other than Richard Chamberlain's in it. So, and to shoot Funi, So she doesn't kill herself. Does it? I mean, like the, the show has shown us some shocking deaths. I just don't recall or remember if she killed herself that tension in the air why is he fucking up the rock garden like what is that all about is that a symbolism thing is that a foreshadowing thing that he's gonna mess things up here mess up their pretty little world the cross right there yep the thing is we saw in the beginning of the episode her son's there wow wow come on the way What's that all about? Is that to keep the legs from jumping? Oh, wow. Kiyama didn't show up. You bastard. It's got to be Blackthorn, right? Oh, shit. Oh, here we go. I will do it. Wow. No, please. <laughs> Wow, that's awesome. <sighs> wow. <laughs> yeah, she's like, don't do it too early, guy. This is your first time, so just wait. Oh, man, they're not going to do this, are they? Ugh! I didn't think they were going to do this with Katsumoto, and they did it. So <sighs> Steve said that wasn't in the books. I don't know if this is in the books. So. Oh, close the doors okay. oh, is she though <sighs> he gave her the permits Jesus oh of course of course 
Yep, the other lady's gonna want to go. <laughs> Man, if only we'd seen more of this connection between them in this in the series, I'd have been, you know, very excited to see more of their love relationship. I know it's working for some people, and I know it's not working for other people. But I think it would have been more powerfully. These moments might have been might have carried a lot more weight if we had seen them connect in more powerful ways, in my opinion. Ah, yeah, here we go. <clears throat> Kiss her, you idiot! Yeah, there you go. Finally. No way. No way. They're all just going to celebrate under Ishido's banner? Oh! Oh, shit! Oh, damn! Ah, fucking Yabushige, of course. This is what Ishido wants. Is he gonna, what's he gonna, is he gonna kill? Oh. Ah, shit. Oh, oh! Yeah, that's old school Japanese having the blood splurt on the... Ah, uh, shit, these are assassins. Fucking hell! Oh! the fuck are they gonna kill all the women too holy shit oh you crafty bastard yeah well she gave you crafty fucking bastard oh 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 whoa forgot about his gun Rico's like, I handle my own shit. Huh. Yep, she knows. Oh! Oh, wow! Oh! Crafty motherfucker, that Blackthorn. Yeah, but she gave you dirty bastard trying to get him to the gate. Oh. oh, they locked themselves in the way she was. She gave man, is he gonna ice a few of them? Do him and Blackthorn go out, or does she go after with Mariko? Or she he go after with Mariko? Oh. Yeah, well, she gave won't help. Son of a bitch. No, 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 no. No! Oh, shit. Ah, oh, shit. This show, man, this show. God. We've seen so many people die over the last few weeks, but I in no way thought that was going to happen. Even though they were teasing it, even though it seemed like they were heading uh, leading up to it, I was like, no, 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 this, she's going to get out of this. Like, she's always gotten out of it. Oh, my God. 
I don't know. I feel like I'm angry, but I'm also like impressed at the same time. So, ah, crap, crap. Damn it. Um, okay. Well, that was an awesome episode of television. Maybe the greatest episode of the series is I'm kind of like reacting to it right now. Right now, I thought the writing was great here. The acting was fantastic. And certainly the um, shocking ending, for God's sakes. Try not to get emotional here on this uh, reaction or watch along. But, man, she was my favorite character of the series. Yes, Yabushige is fun and Toronaga is awesome. But Mariko's journey has been something that was so well laid out so well planned out and anna so i did a wonderful job acting as lady mariko and i was really enjoying i should have known when she started showing up on all the talk shows this week that this was her way of saying goodbye to the show son of a bitch i, I guess i i watched uh, the last week i've been watching these videos of uh, the character who uh, Blackthorn is based on and how he, the real life person that uh, Blackthorn is based on and how he like married a Japanese woman, had two kids. I just thought in my head it was Mariko that they that she they end up marrying and getting together, but clearly not. I mean, I don't know. Maybe, I don't know. Maybe like she survives. I don't know. Damn it. This is like the Red Wedding. This is like those... And this is just like this. I mean, they've been mirroring Game of Thrones so much this season. And wouldn't wouldn't you know it? The ninth episode, the penultimate episode, which is usually the most dramatic episode in Game of Thrones, that's the episode that is like what they've been building to. And I guess we'll see the season finale next week with the denouement and what happens with everybody after this. But oh my god, she just had slept with Blackthorn. Looks like she was except maybe maybe she knew. Maybe she knew one way or another she was going to have to die, but damn it. Very religious crucifixion almost with the arms out and stuff. So, uh. <laughs> damn it. I loved her, man. She was so good in the show. She was such a good character, too. Fuck. Uh, all right. Well, there you go. That's my <clears throat> reaction and watch along. For episode nine of Crimson Sky, um, you're if you've read the book, I'm sure you know we go where we go from here. But for me, I'm just like, this has to finally motivate Blackthorn to play a hand here and fight him and Toronaga, maybe coming together. What will he kill Yabushige? Because I think he I think he suspects at that moment when Yabushige wouldn't help him, it certainly looked like Mariko knew that uh, Yabushige had betrayed them. And so kind of like Jesus, right? She's almost like Jesus and Yabushige being the Judas who betrays her for 30 pounds of silver or 30 silver coins, rather. Uh, she sacrifices herself because in her mind, that's the way this is supposed to be. And, she, you know, in retrospect now, looking back through the episode, she, you know, she kept saying that death and, and life are the same. Death and life are the same. Talking to Ochiba, talking to Blackthorn. So I guess that's the lesson that this episode is supposed to leave us with is that it matters how you approach both. Ugh. All right. Well, I'm heartbroken. I'm sad. I'm I'm upset like I was after Red Wedding and shocked. But that means it was a great episode. If it upsets me, entertains me, thrills me, impresses me, and, and um, leaves me sitting with it, which I imagine it will, then it's a damn good episode of television. Damn. I, I like, but I liked, I mean, her storyline was so great. This Yabushige was fantastic. I wish, obviously, as I said, there's more with Blackthorn. The stuff with Ochiba and her was touching, um, talking about their past. And certainly there are two women stuck in that patriarchal society trying to survive the only way they know how separately. And then Ishido's stuff. I mean, Ishido constantly on the back foot, constantly one step behind Tornanaga. So, uh, man, this is leading to one hell of a finale next week. And we'll see if they keep going with the show, which I think they should into a season two, because this show is damn excellent. Damn excellent. All right, well, what would you think of the show? Let me know down in the comments section below. My review for this will probably be out already. Steve Morris and I are going to record the re review later on today, uh, and I try to get those out as soon as possible, but this editing is going to take longer, so 
Um, if you haven't watched our review, go back and watch our review. I'm sure, I'm sure we're going to go even deeper into the show and break down all the stuff. And Steve is a an avid reader of the book, so he knows everything that happens in the book. So he'll give me comparisons and let me know if she dies in the book, uh, like she dies. Well, I assume that she dies here. Um, and what was going on with uh, Blackthorn and Ochiba and Ishido, Ishido. So, all right. Well, anyway, there you go. I'm sorry. I wish I ended on a more positive note. Uh, except that, except that I guess I should say it's a fantastic episode of television. So I'm very happy of that, but I'm super sad that we've lost Mariko. It seems like and my favorite character in the show. So we'll see what happens next week. What, what, what do you thought? What are your thoughts on the show? What are your thoughts on what happened here? Were you shocked as much as I was? Let me know down in the comments section below. What do you think is going to happen next week? Let me know down in the comments section below who lives, who dies. Uh, let me know all of that. And um, um, all your guesses. Cause I want, I want to read them all and see which one of yours is the closest to what we actually get uh, on the show. Um, all right. Well, thank you so much for watching this reaction and, and watch along. I appreciate you all madly and uh, appreciate you all taking a chance to watch me react to this thing in live in real time, rather and live as I was watching it. Um, uh, Cause it was a lot to consume. Uh, and now I'm going to go think about it for a while and, and, and think about all my choices in life for God's sakes. Uh, all right. Thank you all. Take care. As I said, don't forget to watch my spoiler review for it. That is probably up by now. Uh, here on the Outlaw Nation channel to be in Steve and come back next week because I will definitely do a watch along with the finale, reaction watch along the finale, and a spoiler review with Steve. And maybe we'll go live so that people can chime in with their own thoughts about the season and all of that. All right, thanks so much. Take care of yourselves. Be well. Remember to subscribe to the channel down below and hit that bell button so you see we're dropping all the content we do here and head on over to the Patreon, patreon.com slash John Roca. I would appreciate it. All right, take care of yourselves. Be well. And I'll talk to you next time with another brand new reaction and watch along here from the Outlaw Nation.